We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we're going to be answering questions from our lobbyists, the fine folk who have joined us here live on Twitch. So things have been interesting here the last couple of weeks. So a week ago, I got my second dose of the Pfizer vaccine, and that had me feeling not so hot by the afternoon. So we had decided to cancel last week's show. So sorry if you came here looking for us or you were watching your podcatcher for us. Along with that, Amazon had a huge buy two, get one free sale and a coupon sale that both launched at once. Now, that was a week before Prime Day. And while well, Prime Day just hit Monday, Tuesday this week, yesterday at this point, which is honestly the busiest day of the year for Deanna and I. Now, these things combined meant there was no time for podcast, YouTube's blog things, or putting out general tabletop bellhop combat. Content combat? Tabletop bellhop combat. That's a, that's a different one. So basically, we went a week without creating any content. Uh, besides Amazon sale links and landing pages. It also meant I didn't really have any time to write up show notes or really prep for tonight's show until early this morning. So we're taking the easy way out. We decided we, we no longer do these once a month. We do them when we need to, and now we need to. So we are going to be doing a live Q&A or AMA tonight. So start sending those questions in, if you haven't already, via Twitter or Discord earlier in the day. Now, in order to give people in the chat room a chance to reply to that and ask some questions, I do want to take a moment to thank everyone who checked out our Prime Day page or followed us on social media or went over to the blog or whatever and, and interacted with our content, whether that was purchasing things or just taking a look. It was a record-setting year for us in many ways. Uh, the amount of content we were putting out there, the amount of interactions, paid views, blog visits, click-throughs, and while most importantly, sales. Over the two days of Prime, we ended up selling over 2,000 items, which is a real big deal for us. While we love our Patreon patrons and the people who sub to us on Twitch and our subscribers and followers on YouTube, which are all important to us, currently, affiliate sales is the thing that lets us keep playing and talking about games. Now, while we're working to shift that to something a little more stable, like if Amazon suddenly said, no, no more affiliates, we'd be stuck. Days like Prime Day do help us to not have to scramble month to month and give us a nice, I don't know, nest egg is not the real word for, for it because we're not saving it for later. But, you know, helps keep us solvent and not worried about running out of money by the end of the month. All right. Well, well uh, <clears throat> we uh, have people coming in, coming up with their questions in the lobby. We got a question from one of our patrons in the Discord earlier today. Courtney asks, who is your all-time favorite designer and which of their games is your favorite? All right, you want to start with that while I um, try to find what's going on with the captioning. It's fine. It's working. Oh, okay. Danielle was saying they were stuck. Oh, weird. <laughs> I can't even find the stupid window <laughs> i don't i don't know where my web caps near window went it's buried under stuff most camera shifted yeah, you did. Not even see me. oh yeah oh yeah look at that that is weird my... do you move your camera or something possibly hold on let me i can hear there you go you're now you're back i don't know what happened there all right <laughs> <laughs> There we go. We're good to go. All right. Question. Favorite designer. Uh, I think everyone who's listened longer, Courtney's a newer fan of the show. I know he went through the backlog. Jeez, uh, bless him. Um, <laughs> went through the backlog, but I would have to say Steffenfeld is definitely my favorite uh, board game designer. And favorite game is... Whew, you know what? I want to say Amerigo because it was my favorite Feld for a very long time when I like played them a little more often. But due to the pandemic, we really haven't been playing a lot of those style of games because most Felds are not great two player. And like, it's been so long since I played Amerigo. I I can I don't even know if I remember how to play it. It uses a cube tower for action selection. I know you're exploring islands, but like like that's all I remember about it. Whereas more recently, I've been playing um, Carpe Diem which I really enjoy from Feld and Bruges, though trying to teach Deanna and Sean playing online didn't turn out too good. <laughs> so, so Bruges somewhat, that, 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 we have to add Bruges to the Sean playlist. Now that we've knocked some games off on the list, we need to rebuild it. We need to add Bruges to the Sean playlist. 
Um, I know Deanna loves Trajan. One of my favorites of all time is Macau, which is very out of print. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Amerigo just because the last time someone asked me that and I actually sat down and looked at all my Feld games now extrapolating that I've now played Merlin and I've now played, um, like I said, Carpe Diem and a few other newer Felds. Luna I've played since then. I still think Amerigo is better, but it's been so long since I played it. I need to confirm that. Maybe I'd sit down and like be, this is too epic. There's too many choices. There's too much going on, but I, I'm going to go with Feld and Amerigo. So right now, I will say most excited, right? If you know how we do the, the the top 50 games of right now, if you ask me what fell do you want to play right now? If Sean was here, I'd say Bruges. If it was just Deanna and other people who I play with all the time, I would say Carpe Diem. Like those are the ones I'd be most interested in playing right now because a year ago, I'd have to, I'd have to prep. I'd have to, I'd have to be like, no, we can't play it because it's got a thick rule book. It's well done. It's, it's color coded and stuff like that. It's by Queen Games. They do a great job at color coding their rule books and stuff. <clears throat> and then Deanna saying, I, I love Trajan, but I hate teaching it because, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on. It, it's one of those games where there's so many options in the game, kind of like when we taught Eclipse. Uh, there's You have to front load everything. Like you need to know all the possible options before you take your first move. And it's such a pain to teach that way. And like, I wish I could teach Eclipse by having like setting Sean up and going, go, what do you want to do? Well, I want to move my ships. Okay, this is how you do it. But it just, it doesn't work, right? Yeah. Like it... <laughs> It wouldn't work that way. And I think if I if I realized we were playing that, I should have watched a, a, a video for That's that. That's fine. I, I don't to one think on the, the teach down. was that bad. No, it really wasn't. I mean, we again, we had have, we have more time as people will learn later. Yes. So uh, I see lots of questions yep. rolling in from the Absolutely. chat. So I think we're probably going to ignore the ones we got in our Discord earlier in favor of those awesome people who joined us live. Now, do you have a favorite designer? Uh, you know, know what? You don't track designers as much. Yeah, but I'm I, to think. I have to say, I, I really probably don't. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, no, I, I can't. I can't really yeah. nail anyone down as that, uh, unfortunately. I'm like, I don't know who designed the DC deck building game. I honestly don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, those are. It's a good question. Are they even <laughs> all the same designer? Probably not. I would I would be shocked if they were because there's such a, take a quick look. So there's such a difference of... between uh you know games like uh you know the the core games and some of the expansions versus uh, versus the crisis uh versions or even the head to head versions. Matt Hyra and Ben Stoll. See so you no. Know, yeah, no, that's uh, those not are not names that I'm overly familiar with. Yeah, I know no. I, I there are others I definitely enjoy like I, I'm tempted to say Prospero Hall, but that's not one designer. Yeah, again, but that's a design team. It's a, that's a design, design team, but they have done some really impressive stuff. They have. Uh, I mean, if I was going to go that, if you know, if if, if, we, if we wanted to cheat, I could say Prospero Hall and Horrified is probably uh, well. Yeah. Oh, the there one. you go. So, I think Prospero Hall counts. Um, I'm a big fan of the Bamboozle Bamboozle Brothers as well, Sen and Chris. I haven't um, played it yet, so I'll well. <laughs> well, no, you yeah. you played, but wait, there's more. That's that. That's true. I have, yeah, yeah. Th that is them. Um, and well, the Scooby Doo is awesome. Sean has that now. Mm -hmm. We pass that on. All right, what's our next question? Okay, well, our next uh, question comes from lobbyist Pax the Paladin. Question from my daughter: After I shield shared your great big list of tabletop mechanics <laughs> with them, how do you define a mechanic? I came up with a thought. It's any interaction between players and the game system. Could be a way the system affects players, a way players change the system conditions, or a way players affect each other. How would you define it? And I'm just going inter to interject here before, before Mo answers. Um, and there's actually a huge uh, online battle about this. Mechanic, mechanism. Mechanic versus mechanics yep. or mechanism. Yes. Uh, technically, if you want to be all English uh language uh cruel or, or stickler uh mechanic is a person who fixes things and fixes engines in particular uh and mechanics or mechanism is the correct term for no. the games and we got Was we we, we were never we were we were never uh sticklers about this we we couldn't no. care less but there are a lot of people out there who will complain loudly if you use the term mechanic in this context oh. Mechanic came from video gaming, the mechanics of the game, and then branched into board gaming, and languages change over time. Nowadays, it's a game mechanic. 
I know very few people that use mechanisms <laughs> and the ones that do um, tend to fit the term grunyard pretty well. <laughs> so yes, um, honestly, it, 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 it's your user experience. Uh, um, a mechanic or a mechanic or a mechanism is the thing that lets you interact with the game. It, it's the moving parts. It's what makes the game do what it does. It's, it's the system of the game. It's what makes it a game instead of a, a loose playtime activity. The rules of the game are how to interact with the game mechanics. So it's, it's the moving parts. It's what makes the game do its thing. And I would say the rules actually are probably the UI for the mechanics. That actually makes more sense. This probably could have been a whole topic, actually. <laughs> we probably could have went on and debated back and forth on this one. But I, I would say it, it's it's the thing that does something in the game. Like, like, otherwise, you just have a bunch of cubes on the board and you have some dice. Well, I roll the dice. Well, what do I do with that? Rolling the dice isn't really a mechanic, but then if I use them to move a piece, oh, I have a roll and move. If I use them to generate resources, you have a, a random resource generation system or whatever, right? Like, like, like having cards in your hand versus tableau, those are two different things. Building a tableau means permanence, whereas cards in your hand tend to get played. And, and those are different mechanisms or mechanics. I should just not stick to mechanics. <laughs> Sorry, That's what I, was using. I know. I, 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 I put it in your brain. Uh, so nah. interestingly, w Wikipedia actually has a huge article on this and starts off by saying there are no concrete definitions. Um, there you go. But use, they use phrases like uh, the rules that govern and guide the player's actions. See, to um, me, that's the rules. Or, or a game's mechanics effectively specify how the game will work for the people who play it. Um, yeah, computing definitions include opinion that... Systems of interactions between the player and the game. See, that makes more sense to me. Because uh, the other thing, too, is, is if there's anything behind the scenes. I was trying to think if there are any mechanics in board games that happen on their own, and I can't think of any in board games. Like in, in video games, yes. It's all kinds of stuff you never see. Well, but I mean, there, there, there are AI. In a board game, well, I mean, there's the AI, like, you know. Uh, no, but the actual mechanic would be like flip a card to find out what happens. Yeah. Where like uh, there's nothing where because I did this this and this this happens, I I can't think of anything like that though maybe. Uh, I mean, some resource generation I guess happens. Yeah, that way in some. I don't games. know, but then you'd have like whatever, like a, like a market adjustment mechanic, which would then take yeah. your resource generation and adjust it. So I, yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's what makes the game work, right? It's 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 the bits, it's the the mechanisms. I guess that that's where that term would fit better. The, the 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 bits the engine the mm -hmm. the the stuff that makes the game work i mean arguably the dice tower in some of your favorite game or the cube towers in some of cube your favorite tower. games are behind the scenes uh mechanisms yeah. that you don't uh have anything to do with right you you it's it's a black box See, that you yeah, input but is, in and put out is the cube tower a mechanic i don't think it is i think the mechanic is you drop cubes in a tower and then you read the output. But but something has to generate. I mean, if, if it was just that, then whatever you dropped in would come out. There has to be a hidden mechanic in there. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know if that's a mechanic or a tool. To me, that's more of a tool. Where the mechanic is, you take all your armies, you gather them together, and you drop them in the tower, and then you read the results. To me, that's the mechanic. What happens in that tower is like a tool. That's that's you don't well, again, influence it's, that. But again, it's, again, it's, you're not interacting with that. What's happening inside? But again, though, that that's why it's the hidden mechanic, right? It's so yeah. it's it's like you know when you swing a sword in a video game, you think you're swinging the sword and you're hitting and something's happening, but the game is doing a whole bunch of math that you don't, that doesn't affect that you don't know about, but it's still happening there in the background to decide what happens when the sword hits the bad guy. Yeah, I guess. So that's the that's the hidden mechanic aspect. There aren't too many it like that, though. I think it's the only one I can think of. Yeah, there aren't um, a lot. There, there are, yeah. I mean, you could argue um, the how the barbels come out in gizmos. Yeah, that's um, what I was. I was trying to think like gizmos, <laughs> potion explosion. Like, there's a, there's a few. Yeah, but there there aren't too I, many. I, yeah, uh, I, don't, I I still don't know if I'd call those hidden things as as part of the or, uh, mechanic. Again, like potion explosion mechanic is I take a marble and then if matching colors come out i take those two right and then stuff happens but that's not the mechanic yeah and, and tool is the range the mechanic the, the is what according to NC, the and, and see i would argue it's not an rng it's a prng 
because there is no real randomness involved there uh in, uh, in especially not in the cube tower um it's not what i'm thinking is, is using the term that the mechanic is how the players interface with it you don't interface with the inside of the tower you don't right. interface with the machine and potion explosion no, no, absolutely. Interface and that's with, with that, that's why that's why i'm specifying hidden hidden mechanic right it's yeah it, just, it is the, something that that's acts a hidden the mechanism there we maybe go. that's where the, <laughs> the terms come in but yeah the stuff that makes the games work yeah and the, the the a bunch of separate pieces that interact together in a way that it produces a game Right. And it, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so many different things. Again, it's, you know, you can have a player and or two players and two dice, but that could be any number of, an, of, of mechanics. Anything, I mean, right? There's a yeah, lot yeah. of different mechanics that could be in play there with just two people and two dice. Yes. Um, so it, it's, it's all about the, the rules and, and implementations of the systems. Yeah. It could be a dexterity game where you're stacking the dice on top of each other, and then the next person has to take the die from the bottom, and whoever drops the dice first loses, right? Like go. just because you have two dice doesn't even necessarily mean you have to roll them. Yep. Uh, or you could roll All them right. and build the build based on how you roll them. Which yes, is... you could you could roll one, and then you got a, a six, so you have to use six fingers to move. <laughs> I don't know. We're, we're we're gonna we're gonna invent a bunch of games. We'll make make an itch. Mm-hmm. .io uh, account and start making games to be played with two people and two dice. Yep, there we go. You can have the 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 you know you roll a die to figure out which body part you have to touch together with the die in between, and then make it to the end of the room and back without dropping them. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, next up, we've got a question from Major Kayla in the chat room. Any board game Kickstarter is catching your eye right now? I, I would have to go to board game Kickstarter. I'll, I'll be, I'll admit like for, for a content creator, I'm bad this way. I I'm, I'm failing. Take my card away. Here you go. Um, I don't tend to track Kickstarters anymore. I, I don't watch them. I, if they show up in my social media feed, I might get interested and click through. Um, I would say I hear about them on podcasts, but I'm finally up to August of 2020. So that's not my excuse anymore. So between not being caught up on podcasts and never actually just going to Kickstarter and browsing anymore, I honestly don't even know what's hot right now. So I have like to say, I, for me, I do actually uh, yeah. hit Kickstarter, but it has not been, and we were actually having a discussion about this before the show, it has not been very good about showing me content that I might actually <laughs> yes. buy or might actually want. Um, so while I do have some board games uh, that are already funded and I'm waiting for, uh, I have not seen anything all that interesting that's that's coming down the line nothing has really stepped out at me i haven't seen anything in the address there's a bunch of stuff out there but none of it is really kind of yeah leaping at me saying you must buy this so what i've seen valor and villainy again the only reason i know anything about that game is it was a prime day deal on the older version and i saw people complaining the old version didn't have solo so they're backing the new one for the solo but that's literally all I know about the game. I know <laughs> nothing else. Uh, there's an Isle of Cats expansion with kittens that you can get the base game. But I, I don't know. In most cases anymore, like I run tabletop gaming deals, right? I don't like paying full price for <laughs> games. And in most cases, these Kickstarters, they're like reprinting of a game that's already available in stores, maybe with an expansion. Don't tend to have enough exclusives to be interesting to me. Yeah. Um One I saw I couldn't believe exists is AEG is doing another big game night box. And it's on Kickstarter, so maybe it'll work this time. But this was an experiment AEG did, which we're going to be talking about an AEG game later in the show tonight. Um, They put up this thing called called the Big... No, it wasn't Big Black Box. It was just like Black Box or something like that. Black Box Party Night. No, Black Friday. That's what it was. The AEG Black Friday Black Box. And it was a box you were supposed to buy on Black Friday. And you would then get it home and get games you didn't know what was in it. Supposed to be like a surprise pack. And what it was, was all actually printed AEG games, but rethemed. So you, even if you own the game before, at least you're getting a retheme. And no, it, it did okay. The first one that came out, the big deal was it came with a full, complete copy of Trains, the deck building game that's very much like Dominion, but with Trains and a board where you can do some route control. We just talked about Trains actually on our um, Next Step Games from Ticket to Ride episode. That was in there. And then a whole bunch of the games. There was a version of, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. 
it was a really neat retheme. It was a, it was a Deadlands retheme of this game, Seven Heroes or something like that. I'm totally drawing a blank on the name of this, and I'm not looking it up ahead of time. <laughs> trying not to cheat. Whenever we do these AMAs, I try to just work off the top of my head and then maybe check facts after. But anyway, a Seventh Hero, that's what it was. It was a retheme of Seventh Hero, but Deadlands, so it had that weird West feel. That was really cool. And there was like six other games, and also there was some version of Love Letter in there. There was something I think called Bacon Wars. And it's like, it was okay, but like, I put that on my shelf and it's just a big bo- black box and I forget what games are in there. <laughs> so I never play them and it's just, it wasn't that cool. So then they're like, oh, the first one was a success. And I think mainly because the day it came out within two hours, someone on Board Game Geek said, oh my God, it's cheaper than buying trains by this instead. So it did pretty well. Then they put out a second one. It was the red box again for Black Friday. This one was eight new games including supposedly, I think it was one or two never before published games. So not only would you get re-themes of existing popular games, you would get two new games. I bought that and I actually broke it out on New Year's Eve with people over gaming thinking, we're going to try all these awesome new games and it just flopped. The games weren't that good. There was a meta game where everyone at your game party night was supposed to get a roll. And then by the end of the game, it kind of like the old um, uh, assassin or murder game but it was more happy themed and none of the games in there were really great. Like they were all okay. And that one flopped. Like if I remember correctly, at least before they moved, CD realm still had two copies. Mm -hmm. And this is from like 2015 or something like that. Like they just couldn't move it. And then they're like, we're going to do this new thing and put out these boxes and call it game night box. And again, it's, they're not going to tell you what's in it. And you're just supposed to show up to a game night, like, Hey, let's get 12 of your friends together and have a game night. Then we're going to open this up and there's our games to play. And it flopped. Well, they're doing a new one, but they're kickstarting it and they're being obvious about what games are in it, I think. But I was just like, didn't that fail completely? <laughs> I'm trying to see what, what they're calling it now. Here yeah. it is. Big game night. No, that's not it. It's an I interesting can't. concept. That's for sure. I'm trying to find it on. It's big game night, Prevere convention experience nine days ago. So. Big game night, AEG's premier convention experience. Can't make it to game night. Yeah, host your own board game night with two brand new AEG games and a special bonus limited to 2,000 backers. But they're at least telling you what the two games are. So this is like a host your own game night. You're going to get two games and a surprise game. Like, I don't know. Someone at AEG just thinks this is such a great idea. (laughs) And to be honest, it's at $44,000. So this seems to be working for them much better than the retail versions. So yeah, AEG big game night. But yeah, I I, I just thought it was so weird. So uh, Mage Kayla just shared in the chat room, uh, Skeptics board game, a game of paranormal investigation by Jonathan Uziak in Buffalo. Oh, that's cool. Which I was is say uh, it. yeah, which is uh, which is funded with fourteen days to go. So uh, um, there's a new Power Rangers expansion. That's a big one. If you got the first game, Power Rangers, uh, whatever Defenders of the Grid or whatever. I didn't get into that originally right um from renegade games so that that's a big deal um i keep seeing multiple companies putting out round dice i don't know what's the deal with that um heroes of barcadia i keep showing up my feed which fits because you like your character she has as you fill it up with beer and as you drink your stats change <laughs> <laughs> like somehow i don't know it looks interesting that uh that, that it's your book- hit points there you go your drink is your hit points uh, okay so you have like five hit points 40 hit points 30 10 so, that, but I can't stand the artwork on it. So I that, wouldn't that buy board it game that book reason. I reviewed uh, a few weeks back uh, is on there and funded. Oh, it funded. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. More power to them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, I don't, I don't see much else. Like, again, I don't know what Kitcher is showing me. Yeah. I just, again, eh. <laughs> I, I just, again, I don't, I stopped. I stopped paying attention to Kickstarter basically. And there's always RPG stuff. I, I literally yeah. have stopped with, the the shutdown and lockdown i gave up on buying or looking at anything role-playing i I have a backlog of stuff to try including a whole bunch of stuff we reviewed early last year like alien and tales from the loop we started working with free league which was awesome but i didn't get any of the games to the table because they're all not like two-player games and they're not games i'm going to play with my kids because more mature themes my kids are not going to like alien and tales from the loop can get a little weird and spooky and i don't i don't know we have magical kitties to play with them yeah i i I just bought a role-playing game before we started <laughs> so there you go sean's buying them and reading them all but yeah i'm, yeah. I'm holding off uh this so. one I'm, I'm actually interested in this one this is uh the era system uh okay. there's a whole bunch of different era games and uh i i this is one that i wished i had found on kickstarter but 
found afterwards, but it's uh, era the import the empowered is the superhero version of the era system. So, yeah, I've heard yeah. of era, but I know nothing about it at all. Yeah, there's so, Ryan. I was wondering, Sean was like going on about coffee for a good 20 minutes earlier. I, know, and I figured and it would work. Him. But uh, okay, so uh, so Kickstarter's not too much catching our eye, but it is interesting that uh, that that Skeptics game has relaunched and uh, seems to be doing pretty well. The Battle of Gods up there for anyone who checked out our review, it's what about a quarter funded at this point. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have a question from Tech in the chat room. What game that you don't already own are you most looking forward to picking up? I don't know. I'm, I'm not <laughs> hyped about anything, honestly. I don't know. I, like, I hit this point sometime in the last, the, maybe it's just the pandemic, but the, the last little while, I'm like, I'm good. I got I got plenty of stuff to play. I, I got piles. I got, I got 108 games in my pile of shame. Every now and then something will come out and I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. But like, there's nothing I'm going to be rushing out to buy anytime soon. Um, I do have three boxes over here. We're going to open up at the end of the show that should have new games in them to play. So it's not like I'm out of stuff to play. Um, no, honestly, I, I'm trying to think. I'm like, I want Hero Quest to show up. I don't know when that's due. Is that next year? I thought it was by Christmas this uh, year. Maybe, but we'll see. It's, you know. Hero still... Quest, but I don't. I'm not even all that hyped about that. Like it'll be cool when it shows up, and I'll probably introduce the girls to it. I'm actually. I'm uh, think. I think the one thing I mean I'd be interested in getting my hands on is the up or the expansion for builders and Bi Minecraft builders and biomes. Uh, I didn't the, even know there was one. The farmers market expansion. Yeah, you, uh, you shared a link to that. And I'm also kind of interested in seeing the uh, what potions brings to the Harry Potter Hogwarts battle when you get to that. Yeah, I don't know if we're even going to touch that box. We may just put that one aside and possibly uh, auction it or get rid of it. Mm. I don't I don't know if I any longer feel comfortable reviewing anything Harry Potter. Ah, uh, fair. I, I yeah, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Like, no, yeah, that's... my kids love it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I, I highly doubt that um, the reasons for doing that are going to go away. So Okay, because I know we, we kind of tried to avoid yeah, I know. the politics we at one about point, it. but... We talked about it before. I we are no longer sharing deals on Harry Potter games. Oh, okay. so we might extend that to right to a bit more because that's encouraging people to buy, and nope. well, that money yep. goes somewhere. No, absolutely. As for the stuff we already own, I haven't decided, but there's a chance we may not because basically we're encouraging people to buy. So fair, fair. And here come all the thumbs down on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. If this even goes on YouTube, but um, so yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. We'll probably play it with the girls. So, uh, know what I want? After playing Eclipse, I want Twilight Imperium 4 and the expansion because <laughs> I have learned that the expansion adds the fourth X. Because that is the thing. I, I, I'm like, it's Twilight Imperium. How do you release Twilight Imperium with no exploration? To me, that was just wrong. I, I was very disappointed with my one play of Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. It felt very incomplete. And sure enough, within a year, here's your big box expansion that costs almost as much as the base game that completes the dang game. Fancy Flight, just sell them together, or at least offer me a package now that both are out. So yeah, I would like to get it just to compare to Eclipse, which we just played, and plan some epic game nights, maybe get it to the table a little more often than the old one. Um, that's one. The Quacks of Quedlin Bird expansion, as we've been playing Quacks more, I hear the expansion makes it way better, so I want that. Um, someone, Gene Chu, I think, was getting me excited about the Commander expansion for Space Base. Right, so that's the second expansion. Yeah, it's yeah. the second expansion, which, yes, we have to get through the first one. <laughs> but one of the things it does is it ups it to seven players, which I'm like, one of my complaints about Space Base is it gets a little slow with more players. But it added in some fast-forward stuff to build up the beginning of the game which I don't know exactly what that does. I, I, and then it, my, my problem. And again, we, yeah, we're going to we'll talk about it. it. We're going to talk about it later, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the market seeing the market with seven players. <laughs> well, yeah. what you have well, to have the, right. the market is just how much table space. Well, yeah, I mean, you're, but you know, the market to, doesn't change. It's no, the market the, doesn't the change, course. but you, you're going to be so yes. far away from the market. You're going to have to get up and go see it. Uh, now I don't often do this. And this is something that, uh, that I know Mo and D don't normally do, but, Go Cuckoo is available on Amazon for under $10. Yeah. 
and it has been for a while there's a link there in the chat room <laughs> if you want to go grab it because i'm yep. sorry but goku is fantastic we it cannot is. say enough good things about that game there you go. there's an ad in the chat room it's an ad but if you don't have it yet you should buy it all right so ryan has pointed out that it was three years between the base game and the expansion it felt like it was one after another <laughs> and I'm not saying it makes player extermination. It's exploration, unless I, I must have enunciated poorly. The exploration. There is no exploration in the base game. Everything, it's all face up, and you know what's on every planet, and you know what's there, and you don't get to flip anything over. Whereas Prophecy of Kings has you put the sector tiles down, face down, and I think there's some other aspects of revealing the universe. Right. Yeah, so, Yeah. <laughs> That's what I missed. I'm like, for I love exploration. That's my favorite part of those. Zaya, I'm the guy who wants to go collect all the exploration tokens and flip the new tiles until we build the whole world. That's that's right. what I enjoy in those games. And then I want to tend to want to play like pick up and deliver, which is something you can't do in TI or Eclipse. There's there's, there's no just be a space trader right. mechanic in those games, which is why they're not sandboxes. Well, your empire. I mean, you're you're running an empire. You're not running. Yeah, you know, it's on not a. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, there are too many empires that just decide, oh, you know what? All we're going to do yeah. is trade. <laughs> I, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, the new stuff in Feld games are coming from Queen. There's four coming pretty soon. I am looking forward to see what they do with those. So these are our new games that are the old game mechanics reused in new ways, um, basically due to licensing issues. So, like, there's a new version of Bruges coming. There's a new version of uh, uh, Macau and all the others. But I, I'm on the fence on these because I own the originals. And unless he significantly improved them, do I really need the new version? And and like, and Feld can make his games too fiddly. It's happened before. And I worry they're going to lose some of it in translation. Like, Bruges won't be the same once it's not Bruges. So those are coming from Queen Games. I don't actually know when. Again, I haven't, I, I'm not on the pulse on some <laughs> of this stuff anymore. Because I don't yep. care. We, we talk about the games we're playing and enjoying and what we love. Yep. Never really been about the new hotness, but even more so. You would think with all the free time we have now that I'd be more <laughs> up on board game news. So many new games just look like a bunch of pretty miniatures, too. Like, I'm not saying they're bad. Yep. But just like my Facebook feed and all the Kickstarters and all the games people seem to be pushing, I'm just like, ah, another game with some pretty miniatures. Yeah, I, I'd, much, some pretty miniatures. I'd much rather people advertise something about the game rather yeah, the than mechanics. the pretty miniatures because i'm not mm -hmm. gonna buy i will not buy a game that has pretty miniatures unless you've proven to me that there's a game there because yeah miniatures are a pain in the butt to salt to store and i don't paint mm -hmm. things and it, it's more hassle than it's worth i'd rather you know i'd rather not play something with pretty miniatures unless yep. it's really really worth it i don't know there was stuff i was excited about a year ago i never got into and it, it just I, there's so much out there anymore too yep no, I mean, so give, give, if I had gotten this question ahead of time, I am sure I probably could have found a few. But yeah, the new the new Felds, I, I I do think it's time to get a copy of Twilight Imperium. Maybe I need to take the plunge and figure out who to talk to at Asmodee or something. And I, you know, I mean, I've expansion. got, I've, I've got, you know, the Minecraft expansion. Uh, potential. I'm interested in seeing what's in the expansion that shown up. You mentioned, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and then, you know, I've got some Kickstarter stuff that I'm, I'm waiting on, a couple of games that I'm waiting on that I'm interested in, Rap Gods and Hoop Gods, mm -hmm. uh, and, and interesting to see how those play. I don't know, anything new coming from Prospero Hall? Oh, Goonies, there's one. I want to see the Goonies game. Ah, uh, yes. That, that's one I would like to check out. Though I don't even know if that's out yet. I think it is. I think it's on Target. I think it's a Target exclusive right uh, now. Maybe. Which will last a month or three or whatever, and then you'll be able to get it everywhere anyway. Yeah, Pan won't... Am. That's another one. That's supposed to be really good. That's another Prospero Hall. Pan Am is supposed to be really good, though. I just watched um, The Aviator, and now I can't help but think of Pan Am as an evil empire and terrible. Like I don't know if anyone's seen that. It's a Martin Scorsese starring, um, oh, the Titanic guy. I can't remember his name off the yeah, top yeah, of my head. I know who you mean. I'm not horrible <laughs> with names, but I know exactly who you mean. And and it's it's actually a really solid movie about not Brad Pitt. <laughs> no brad no, pitt no, was no. not in titanic no uh he's famous for lots of leonardo stuff. leonardo leo. dicaprio that's yeah, it yeah, leo that's it but yeah the aviator is good it's on netflix it's worth watching it stands up it's period piece about the birth of uh air flight and commercial airports all right uh, but anyway it may be that if you watch that you're just gonna be like no pan am's evil <laughs> 
because well that's kind of what the whole movie's about is is pan am making nasty agreements with the government to push out all the competition yep yeah howard hughes i, I couldn't remember the character's name either so it was good all Got right another question absolutely so we're, uh, we're doing too many in one show to promote which is bad but yeah well i oh think well. we're probably on our last one for this haul i think i'm just looking Are at time we? i don't been know that long well, we're about an hour in so uh ryan asks is there a game that you've sold traded or given away that you've later repurchased again nope easy question next <laughs> no serious I, i'm pretty good at making sure i don't give away stuff that i shouldn't have i can't think of anything that i rebought every now and then like there's lots of my old toys i wish i hadn't gotten rid of but more, mainly because well two things one some are worth way more money now and I sold them at a yard sale. But second, I have kids now. Like yeah. I would have loved to have just like I had bought my kids Star Wars toys. I could have gave them a ton of Star Wars toys. But yeah, game wise, no, I, I I don't know. Maybe Deanna can think of something, but I can't even think of something I regret giving away that I'm like, oh, I should have kept that. Uh, yeah, no, I, and I don't really. I don't, you don't I'm, have a lot of games. I haven't gotten, to get rid I haven't of. gotten written, rid of games really. So uh, no. I don't know what that means. It means typo. Nope. Yeah, nope. <laughs> no. Like I sorry. I I don't well, for one, for years I didn't get rid of games. Like I honestly was that collector and I was my excuse was, well, I'm not just a player, I'm also a collector. And I want my game collection to look good and it looks good to look at and it looks pretty on my shelves and it looks great. And I'm like, no, because then it got full and I ended up with piles that didn't look good and now I'm like, I'll start getting rid of stuff. But for years, I wouldn't. Like, I, it took me getting over a 1,000 games before I was willing to get rid of any. But right now, I have, I don't know, 40, like, on this shelf beside me that I planned on getting rid of, but then the pandemic hit. And we were going to be working with the local game store to start doing some consignment sales where they put my games there for sale, and you can buy used games there, which is kind of cool because it makes you – um makes the gaming more accessible right like it, it opens it up to another um income bracket really to be able to pay, play some of these great games right uh, and and plus get me some money which again <laughs> can always use a bit more ryan's mentioning he, yeah. re he repurchased uh risk 2210 ad so i never had that one my cousin had that one and said it was the best version of risk he ever played yeah there are a couple i wouldn't mind picking up to be honest but we didn't get rid of the originals i wouldn't mind a second copy of seafall and restarting with some people who are more dedicated that aren't going to give up partway through. And a second copy of Risk Legacy to, to start over for the same reason. Well, we didn't give up, but like that particular group of four people haven't gotten together for three or four years now, let alone right. the pandemic. Even, even it was a long time. Yeah, it was even pre-pandemic. We weren't getting together to play that game. So I would like to restart Risk Legacy, perhaps with someone who hasn't played it as far as we have or with someone who's finished it i don't know i don't want someone who's finished it because we had a lot that wasn't unlocked but that's not really re buying something we got rid of that's a legacy game we'd like to start with a new group right though honestly like if you gave me the choice i think i'd rather just grab aeon's end legacy and start a new legacy game there's one i want aeon's end legacy and clank legacy those are two games i want that i haven't bothered picking up because i'm like when am i gonna play a legacy game Yep. So yeah, Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. This goes back to the other question. And and um Aeon's End Legacy. Yeah, and I, I I'm I'm interested in the Acquisitions Incorporated Clank, but uh, I don't think I would really end up doing a legacy with my kids. I don't think they'd really be all that as I into it. Uh I could be wrong. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we have we have a hard time getting the whole family to sit down to play stuff. Like my kids love games and they'll play them, but it's the timing overlap. Like we tend to have time at the end of the night when they're in bed, so yeah. it just doesn't work that well. But yeah, I, I Clank Legacy, I think, is definitely up there. And I know the acquisitions incorporated theme, take it or leave it. I just really like Clank, especially the fantasy Clank. Yeah, yeah. And oh. Aeon's End, that's, that should be on the list of games to play with Sean, but it's in my cell pile. Because <laughs> I really, I want the newer edition. I have the original printing and the art's bad and the dials don't work. Like, it, it was one of those games. It was an early Kickstarter success and it got made, which is awesome. Then it did really well. So then they're like, well, we're going to clean it up and make the game we should have made in the first place. And now I have like the old obsolete gruddy copy, which isn't really, but it's just, it's, it's in my head. I realize, yeah, yeah. but they also like tweak the rules and rebalance cards. So like there is another reason, but again, I, I hate even buying copies of games I already own. So I'm like, is it enough different that I should buy it? 
Yeah. Oh, wait, I have an example. Oh. I have an example, but it's it's because I'm dumb. So I got rid of my copy of Anachrony with the Exosuit Commander box set and all the miniatures, huge box. I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. I dropped it off in this new subdivision that I didn't know existed to a couple who had just moved to Windsor who were really excited for when things open up so they could start coming out to our game nights. Because they were asking, why do you, because I'm like, do you have anything else for sale? And I like literally went around with my camera and sent them like <laughs> pictures. And they bought like seven games off me. Like, why do you own so many games? I'm like, oh, I run the Windsor Gaming Resource. And I do local events. Plus, I just love games, blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, I can't wait to come out. And then my Kickstarter copy of the new printing of Anachrony came. And it ends up, I did not buy the new printing of Anachrony. I bought the upgrade box, which lets you upgrade your original copy which I just sold to someone like, I don't know, six weeks prior. Ouch. I thought I was getting the whole thing. And I'm like, what the heck? I swear I backed for the whole thing and the box isn't big enough and what's going on. And I went on Kickstarter and I started digging through and I got to say, it's hard to tell on Kickstarter what you actually backed for when companies use stuff like backer kit on the back end. Oh yeah. So it looks like I just, I just backed the project but it doesn't tell me what I actually backed for. So I ended up having to go through my emails to find my backer kit email. And eventually I'm like, oh crap, I didn't go all in. I didn't just replace everything. And here I was like, when I booked it, like when I, when I backed it, I actually went, now I need to sell my copy to recoup some of the cost of backing the new edition. Well, no, I didn't back the new edition. I just backed the upgrade kit. Ouch. So Thankfully, I emailed these people and I said, look, I know I just sold you Anachrony the other day, but would you be willing to sell it back? And I explained the whole thing to them. They're like, actually, yes, because we didn't like it. Oh. And I'm like, oh, well, it's too bad you didn't like it. But the fact they're willing back, like the problem was I sold it to them in a bundle. So negotiating what price I paid to get it back was a little fuzzy, but right. I got it back. So yes, I bought a game I got rid of because I'm dumb. Because I thought I backed the Kickstarter for a shiny new edition, whereas I only backed for the upgrade kit. And I think I was confusing it with these clips because Eclipse, I backed around, this, both of those came out around the same time. And Eclipse, I did go all in. I, I got the complete upgrade with the extra box set and everything. Right. <laughs> yeah, we all we all make mistakes at times. Yes. Hey, there's games I bought twice too, like this one right here. This, we, we might do a giveaway on this one. <laughs> and I don't even know what happened. I bought this on Amazon because it was really cheap. And I think I just might just added it to cart twice. Because mm. when it showed up, there were two copies. And I'm like, I don't need two copies of this. <laughs> well, at least, yeah. Well, I, and then there's that, one, there's that one RPG I got when, where they, they printed it twice in, this, in the book. I got the book. And yeah. There's only one book, but it's in there twice. I'm like, well, I can't yeah. even, I can't even give that to someone else because it's in the book. It's, I'd have to like break the binding and <laughs> break the binding and sell two copies. Yeah. You bring it to your your book binding friends and get them to rebind <laughs> it for you. Yep. Alrighty. Yeah. So um, do we have? Are we good or we got one more? What do we want to do? Uh, we have nothing else from the lobby. So I think we might as well move on. If it's a yeah. shorter than usual. It's shorter than usual. We're kind of burnt out here and could use some time <laughs> off. So, and we yep. have to get up early tomorrow for for a medical appointment too. Mm, right. Did you try here? No, I haven't done the bottom of the ninth giveaway. All right. Well, I think that wraps up this unplanned live Q&A. Remember, if you've got a gaming or game night question for us, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop.